In this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase, it strikes me that. This is a phrase that I used yesterday a couple of times when I was talking about the emojis that I like to choose. I said, well, I just choose emojis that strike me as cool. When something strikes you, when you describe something as striking you in English, it literally means something hitting you. You know, a ball can strike me in the face. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But when something strikes you in the way that I used it, it means that you notice it or you've decided that it's cool. So I pick the emojis based on ones that strike me as cool. Ones that I notice are cool or ones that I just think are cool when I see them. So they strike me as being cool. The other phrase I wanted to teach you today is the phrase to strike a balance. When you try to strike a balance, you're trying to create a solution to something. Usually you're trying to get two people to agree on something in a way where they're both happy but they don't both get exactly what they want. Sometimes there's three cookies and I have five children that want the cookies. So in order to strike a balance, I cut the cookies in pieces and everyone gets a half and then I get a couple cookie halves too. But anyways, I'm not sure my math there is correct, but I think you understand what I mean. When you strike a balance, if I wanted to strike a balance, I create a situation where everyone gets some of what they want but not exactly what they wanted, and hopefully everybody's happy. So to review, when something strikes you, it can be something that physically hits you. Like if my, uh, one of my kids kicked a ball at me, it could strike me in the head, but it can also be used to talk about something that you've noticed. Um, it might strike you as a little bit funny that there are goats behind me. I'm not sure you can see them today. Is that a goat right there? It might be. I know some of you noticed them yesterday. And of course, the phrase to strike a balance means to create a situation where everyone gets a little bit of what they want, but not exactly what they wanted, but hopefully everyone's happy. Hey, let's look at a comment from a previous video. This is a comment from Judith. And Judith says, thanks a lot, cameraman. My response was, you're welcome. My camera moving skills are great when I want to show something, but not so great when I want to put the camera back in the exact spot I took it from. This time it went quite smoothly. So in my last video, I actually moved the camera while I was doing the lesson and I thought maybe I should do that more. Maybe I should actually move the camera a little bit more so you can see more of the things that are happening around me. I think maybe I scared the goats, maybe not. By the way, some of you thought they might be sheep they do look a little bit like a type of sheep called a dorper sheep, but they are actually boer goats. They are originally from, um, well, these aren't from South Africa, but the breed is originally from South Africa. And we usually keep about five or 10 head of boer goats on our farm. Uh, because if you look over here, we have a bit of land that we can't use for anything else because it's very hilly. So along the river here, we have a pasture where the goats can go when they want to eat. So anyways, just a little bit. Thanks, Judith, for that comment. A little bit of a view of the goats. I will try to learn how to walk with my camera a little bit more for the last minute of these videos, because as the property becomes a little more green, it's a lot of fun to look at. Bye.